Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Electric Supercar Channel. We're gonna get to disassembling the MGA today. Let's get to it. For today's sponsor, we have 70My Dash Cam A500S. And this one has a rear cam set. All right, so we have the main camera, the rear camera. This is the main camera mount. This is a power supply trim removal tool. This will be a cable that probably goes from the main camera all the way to the back. And this one is for the main camera to a power supply. I have installed a few of these dash cams, so this one should go pretty quick. Today's car that we're gonna install it on is a Ford Focus. All right, we've got this all installed. Wires going behind the headliner and everything else. Yeah, you can't even see the wires. Oh, shoot, there's one poking out. I can tack that away. So really clean install. There's a camera at the back. We'll go take this out and get some footage. So this dash cam has a two inch IPS screen. It has an F 1.8 aperture. It has a 1944p resolution and it is equipped with night owl vision. As you can see in the footage, it has really great picture quality both in day and at night. This is powered by the Sony IMX335 sensor. This Sony sensor automatically adjusts exposure balance. This means you can capture things like road signs, license plates. It does have 24 hour parking monitoring and it also has a built-in G sensor. This is the world's best selling dual channel dash cam with over half a million drivers. This is 70 Mai's spring sales event. So use code 15ESC to get an additional 15% off of their already low prices for up to 35% off. So if you're in the market for a dash cam, I'll leave a link in the description below along with a coupon code for 15% off. First, I need to get to the batteries. I need to get the high voltage system kind of all sorted out. There's a battery box under the back here and there's also one in the front. In order to get the battery box out of the car, this whole front hood needs to come off. So there's two hinges, six bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and take those off. So this car is powered by 10 of these battery modules. These are the aux drive battery modules. I can't remember if I've mentioned this on the channel or not. But for the long time and for the whole duration of the first build, I did not have any insulated tools. I just used surgical gloves and kind of hoped for the best. So I've got some tools from Titan that are an insulated set, as well as some really good high voltage gloves. All right, so these are aux battery modules and I believe their nominal voltage or peak voltage is around 14 volts. So we're not dealing with a lot of voltage here. Nevertheless, uh, I believe there are some that are connected to up the voltage. So we just need to disconnect them because I need to get under here to look at the motor. All right, we're just gonna take out the bus bars here. Maybe. Twelve kilovolts. All right, so they should all be disconnected. Pretty similar just to six car batteries that are not connected. So I think I'll go ahead and take them out.
So the battery box had these brackets made. They look very well made, very sturdy. And they go here. My guess is this was the original engine mount. Um, this one looks like it's been shimmed a little bit, uh, probably just to kind of get things just aligned right, but a little too much wobble. So we'll go ahead and fix that while we're here. We'll also check out the motor mounts, make sure everything looks good there as well. Oh, it looks like we've got a couple loose bolts on the transmission. Kind of the installation before this came to me, they chose to leave me some Easter eggs. So uh, there's a couple loose bolts um, for the transmission mount. Um, there was, this one was kind of spaced, had some, uh, I'll call them shims, some washers to get things spaced correctly. Um, just lots of things weren't tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything, make sure everything's on the up and up. And um, I'm guessing because there was some shims there that things didn't quite line up. So we'll figure out how the best way to move forward there is. But in the meantime, while this is open, um, I'm gonna get everything tight. One slight area of issue, um, that part of the transmission kind of hits on this front firewall. And my only concern is um, just that when you're accelerating or whatever, that uh, it'll flex a little bit and kind of make some squeaky noises, probably deform the front firewall just a little bit. So I'm gonna undo the bolts for the motor, also for the transmission, and see if I can kind of just slide it ever so slightly to give it a little more room. All right, so I'm taking off these brackets. Um, number one, I just wanna make sure the motor is well situated. Number two, after I do everything I do, I'm pretty sure that nobody wants to come back and try and coat this. So I'm gonna kind of get this ready, put a layer of protection on it. Um, I'll probably just do one at, a, one at a time. I've got the motor supported from underneath, but uh, I don't want it to kind of rock one way or the other. So I'll just do one, then the other. So I just use this roll bar and chassis paint there's no primer needed. Cover up those spots that are bare. So I don't know if you can tell, but we now have clearance. Granted, it's just a little bit. The other thing I wanted to make sure is we've got clearance on the bottom. There's kind of a support rail that goes under there. Um, I'm just gonna make sure there's clearance. And I think in all those tight places, I'm just gonna put a little bit of rubber so if it does touch, um, it won't rattle and hopefully it won't damage anything. So I've decided that underneath bracket that's kind of touching, um, I'm just gonna take it off, give it just a little more clearance. So I just use this roll bar and chassis paint. It says no primer needed. Cover up those spots that are bare.
Oh, there's a little bit of a chore, but we got it back mounted. So we had to undo all the motor mounts, um, create a little bit of clearance, put a layer of paint to protect from the elements and rebolt everything. So to begin with, there were a lot of loose bolts. So we're, we're certain now that everything holding the motor is good and secured to the frame. So I've just got jack stands on that huge, what do you call that, cross beam, cross member. So again, it seems pretty stable. It's nice when you don't have panels and you can kind of see how everything's held together. So now that the back's up, we'll go ahead and take off the rear battery box. We also found another one that looks like it could use a little bit more of the chassis paint. Just to make sure it doesn't rust. So we'll paint this one as well. I am going to take the cover off of the rear battery box just to see uh, if all the connections are there, what else we need to do. And man, this has so many screws all around the outside. It's almost like they're compensating for something. So this one looks like we've got a contactor, a big old fuse, bus bar, go down. Looks like they've got it wrapped over here. Pretty simple battery box, but it looks good. Way too many screws though. So this is a six millimeter tap. The, uh, that cover had like, this where half of them were kind of like cross threaded or whatever. So I'll just go through and um, run a tap through all of them so they go in very smoothly. So I'll start with one just to make sure I'm not ruining anything. Yeah, that feels good. All right, so I think all I need to do with this one is they've got these places right here, and this is for like cell taps, I believe. I'm not sure if they've got thermistors as well, but I just need to hook those wires up, and oh, I don't see, I thought this would have, uh, anyways, probably needs a BMS satellite here. So all those wires from the cell taps and stuff need to go to a BMS module and then out this plug. So each of the battery modules has kind of a connector to get the cell voltages as well as the thermistor readings. I've got these uh, wire harnesses for the cell taps. I was gonna plug all those in and um, get them to their BMS modules. However, uh, the cell taps don't seem to be reading correctly according to their labels. So the kit or the battery modules came with these wire harnesses for the cell taps and thermistors. And I plugged them in and there's just something not quite right. So the other end has these labels on them. Essentially none of the voltages or thermistor readings match these labels. So they've got some that are labeled as thermistors. They're not thermistors. They've got some that are labeled as like V1, V2, V3, and they're not reading that as well. So I'm having so much trouble that I decided to pop the lids off of one of these. And I'm glad I did. So right there you can actually see it's got kind of the pin out. That pinout does not match the wire harnesses that were provided. So uh, we'll have to redo some things. The other thing is some of the critical wires don't even have connectors. So we're gonna have to see if we can uh, swap some pins and get things to the correct place. I drew a little sketch on the board. Those lines represent kind of the wires coming out towards me. And I also wrote on what those wires should indicate. And I'll show you here, but you'll notice like the first three slots are empty. 
So as you can see, we actually need some of those wires to communicate the information that we need. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can pop some of these terminals out and replace them. All right, I've done this on 10 different connectors now, so I'll just kind of show you one. None of my removal tools would work, so I actually got one and ended up grinding it down to a finer point, because this is like the smallest ones I've ever seen. So for this one, this gray kind of piece of plastic, this tab has to be popped up. So I just kind of do it from both sides. Click, click. So insert it. And then basically this guy, that one. Basically you can just push them back in. The clips are so small that I don't hear or feel lots of times them going in. Oh, that one I heard. That one I heard. So that one I didn't. But basically if they're all, if they're all like all the way forward, then this one can be clipped down. If they're not, then it can't. So there it is. So now we've got all the connectors, all the pins in the right places. Doing a quick check here. Okay, looks like we got all the wiring figured out. Looks really good. All right, I've got the wiring looms all made up. So there are some pins that we weren't using in the connectors. I just unplugged them and kind of wrapped them around. So they're not gonna be live, but if for whatever reason in the future we wanna plug them back in, that's easy enough. So wiring looms all ready. Um, I do need to order some more pins. This has got like a two slot that uh, we just don't have any, you know, and I think I need four of them for all the thermistors. So I've got thermistors that we still need to plug in, but everything else is good to go. We got a lot done on the MGA. We were able to take out both battery boxes, uh, kind of resituate the motor in a better position and uh, even got to get into some of the wiring of the battery boxes. So that's where we're gonna leave it this time. We got a lot more content for you coming. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Come on, dude, focus. Yeah, well, kinda. So basically each of the, each of the, none of my, uh, what do you call these?